If you want to be a Sith Lord or Kaladin Stormblast, shout out if you get that reference, the Spear Hand is for you. This fast fluid vocation deals physical and magic damage, has crowd control and melee and ranged and a whole lot to its kit. So let's talk about everything you need to know about the vocation. Let's go. Only three vocations to go. Let me know which one you would like me to do next. So you unlock the Mystic Spear Hand relatively early in the game, depending on the decisions that you make and, and how fast you progress the main story. But essentially avoiding as many spoilers as possible here. Once you arrive at Venworth, you'll need to do some quests for Captain Brant. Once you have done one of these quests, you can then return to Melv. Melv will be under attack and Sigurd will actually be there helping protect the town. Now, after you've done that, you can actually speak to him and he will then just give you the mystic spear hand vocation alternatively if you didn't talk to him here or you can't find him he actually lives in half village so you can actually go down there and speak to him as well what's really unique about the mystic spear hand is that it is a hybrid vocation both in terms of having melee options with the duo spear and ranged options with the redoubted bolt or foreboding bolt with that you charge the r1 and it can do both physical and magic damage there is a lot of flexibility in terms of those damage types and capabilities of the spear hand. The spear hand does also have some CC potential as well with redoubted bolt causing the enemy to flinch and then once you charge it by holding the R1 it will become a forbiding bolt which will freeze the target in place preventing its movement and you can actually charge the R1 while you're just attacking normally right just like doing your normal actions you can charge it so you can essentially like lock enemies in place especially the larger enemies by just continually using this and like weaving it into your normal attack pattern preventing them from moving around or say flying off. You can then also combo for Biting Bolt with the magic cut to do sort of like a finishing type attack on smaller enemies. Like when they're locked in that place, you can then use the magic cut and you like stab into them and do this sort of like heavy attack animation that does a bit more damage. Movement is really important for the spear hand, right? You've got your normal square attacks that deal physical damage while your heavy attacks do magic damage with the magic cut. And you can actually weave these two together doing both the twin cuts and the magic cuts as well. And unlike some of the other classes, you will be using these basic mechanics quite a lot as a spearhead, right? From the main flow of combat is using both the light and heavy attacks, weaving them together with the redoubted bolt or the foreboding bolt to deal damage in that way, rather than dumping all your stamina with certain skills like you do with some of the other classes like the mage and the sorcerer, for example. Speaking of those skills, there is definitely a few good options here. The first being Dragoon's Foin, which is a sort of a gap closer primarily like you'll use this to get in close to enemies and you can also do this against flying enemies or larger enemies to get up high as it, it can be used vertically to deal damage in that way and get in close to enemies you can also use this say to climb on top of enemies I've done that a couple of times as well it's definitely a great gap closer and damage dealer to you can get close to enemies now there is actually a skill called quick foint which is an upgrade to foreboding bolt that can actually be a gap closer as well so you can use that in instead, but the flexibility that this skill gives you is definitely worth using. Sky Dragoon's Feast, in a similar way, you can consider it as well as this darts you upwards in the air and then you plunge down. You can actually use this to get on top of enemies and other ways as well. It's also good to, you know, slam yourself down on enemies and deal damage in this way, especially from high ground. So a lot of movement capabilities just in those first two skills. And a skill that you probably haven't thought about that you really should be using is the Maraw Shield, which erects a magical barrier around yourself and any allies that are close enough. Now, the barrier doesn't last a super long time, but it does nullify all manner of attacks during that duration. This is really good defensive skill for this offensive focused melee class because you will be taking damage as this class, right? Because you're going to be right in the center of combat and being able to prevent damage from coming. Say if you've got, you know, a big attack coming that you know that there's like, a, you know, one of the big group creatures is building up some attack animation, you know it's going to hurt. You can use this to prevent that damage from actually hitting you. There is also potential in your fourth slot to run one of the range skills like Setching Blade or the Humble Offering. It, in, it's not necessarily a requirement. You could even run like Unto Sky, which launches enemies into the sky, which is like, obviously it's fun, right? These abilities are very cool and cinematic, which makes this class or vocation really enjoyable to play. But the downside to Unto Sky is that you won't actually get any XP from the enemy that you've just yoinked into the air. So you probably won't want to use that too much unless you just like 
the cool effect of it. What you'll also notice with the skills here is that they are mostly used for either movement or situationally to accommodate certain things like say protection or move enemies around that sort of a thing, right? It's not like there's other classes where you're going to dump all of your stamina into maximum damage dealing spells, but you've got the option there to sort of manipulate the battlefield in that way. Grab all the core skills as you should with all the other vocations. We've already talked on foreboding bolt and quick foit. Scattering bolt, if time correctly can turn your foreboding bolt into an aoe attack which is also not bad and also winding cut is really really good damage dealer which especially on downed enemies if you can hit them in the face with the duo spear because it spins the spear very quickly and can deal damage at quite a fast rate for the augments here all the spear hand augments are fine to absolutely run but you should spend some time leveling some of the other vocations especially as you don't start as a spear hand right say fighters metal for the increased physical defense or the mages apotropism for increased magic defense and the warrior's vitality for increased HP, right? Like any ways that you can improve your overall survivability is good for the spear hand as you will take damage as this class. Like you can avoid damage because you are able to manipulate yourself, like move around very quickly, but it's just good to have that flexibility compared to some of the other classes like the warrior and the fighter, for example, or even the thief that just avoid damage entirely with their swift step. The vocation maester here is Sigurd. We've already touched on him and where you can initially find him, but he will then send you on a bit of a quest if you want to unlock the maester training for him which is a skill called wild fury now this occurs a little bit later in the game you won't get this straight away and it's a little bit spoilery for some of the stuff that i tried to avoid earlier when you unlock it so i'll try to be vague here but essentially from that attack on malv it the dragon that did attack there he will want to actually go and finish it off and in order to do this you'll first need to actually access the batal area either via the main quest or sneaking your way in there at the dragon's breath tower sort of along the coast of batal like southwest ish he will actually be located there and help you to take out the lesser dragon that is located there after you've defeated the dragon sigurd should give you the tome for the maester's skill but if he doesn't like he didn't me you may need to give him a gift. He fell off the tower during the fight, so I don't know if that's related or not, but I revived him and then went back to my camp and then I was able to talk to him. I gave him a gift and then he seemed to like me again and he actually gave me the tome for Wild Fury. Now, Wild Fury unleashes a relentless flurry of slashes and magical attacks with a clone of yourself. This does tremendous amounts of damage and you can spam this just by continually pressing the button to consume all of your stamina. This is like the main damage dealing ability for the spear hand and it really makes the spear hand sing once you have unlocked this before this point you've only got like those moving abilities and everything we've already discussed but this really brings the whole vocation together so i do recommend going to do this as soon as you can that dragon fight can be pretty tough but if you can beat it this will absolutely make your spear hand gameplay just so much better let's talk about equipment quickly now the core part of the spear hands kit being the duo spear they need both strength and magic as they deal both types of damage so upgrading your weapons in venworth is probably the better option here because it does upgrade both strength and magic sort of evenly even if it's not particularly leading either way the infernal edge is an amazing fire imbued spear you can get from the ancient battleground this comes from a quest called tolls of rest which you will run into a gentleman sort of on the way to the ancient battleground and you'll need to find him and then he'll you'll save him in combat and then he'll ask you to follow him the rest of the way he'll lead you deep into the ancient battleground and you'll complete his quest there and he'll give you a key to the door that is just outside the room that this finishes in if you can't find him or say you started this quest and then you he ran off or something chances are he's probably dead which is what happened for nick here because that whole area is just littered with en enemies and he'll just be standing there waiting for you to show up so he may have actually died he actually died for me even after the quest which you can see the footage of here so it's just a thing to point that you may need to go check the morgue if you can't find this npc as he's probably dead the vendor at the checkpoint rest town also sells some quality armor for the spear hand that you can grab early upgrading your armor is important as a spear hand because you are going to be in melee range so having that flexibility is definitely important for your rings, you can really run anything you want, but the Ring of Skullduggery can be good to increase your damage dealt when attacking enemies from behind, because for the most part, you can do this because you can move yourself around the battlefield very quickly, similar to the Thief. This can be a really valuable ring for a spear hand player. Some quick tips for the Mystic Spear Hand. In terms of pawns and what you should run, you obviously want a mage for healing, and then otherwise, it's kind of up to you. Like fighters or warriors to take some of that brunt of damage coming towards you can be valuable 
valuable but because you're you've got a lot of movement and flexibility with the spear hand in terms of like range and melee and cc and a bit of protection as well you can sort of run anything you like like i don't think there's any necessary like perfect synergies or requirements that you have to run with a mystic spear hand like some of the other classes now holding the redowning bolt does prevent stamina regen so just be careful of managing your stamina in that way but learning how to master the mystic spear hands movement capabilities as well as the timing of the foreboding bolt will definitely level up your gameplay as this vocation as it's a little harder than some of the other vocations but there is a lot of freedom in terms of how you want to attack and deal with situations that I think if you get like used to the timings of these different attacks and being able to weave things together and use the different types of bolts, then you'll really have a lot of success with the Mystic Spearhand. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.